when you make a when you make a movie, when you do a design, when you do make an animation, when you design a magazine or anything like that, you have to take this into careful consideration because every country in the world has very strong copyright laws and intellectual property laws, right? Because if you are an artist and you take your time and effort to make this kind of, to make art or make media or write a story or draw a picture or do animation or make a, a template or do any of these things, you should be able to make money off of it. Um, but quite often, media professionals uh, violate copyright law and they steal other people's art or music or something and use it, use it without their permission. Now, depending on the country, the copyright law can be a bit different. In um, the United States, the law says that uh, when you, the, uh, you have copyright, right? It's the exclusive right of a creator of an original work to decide how it's used. It's a limited amount of time, but it's a really long time. It was originally 50 years, and then they expanded it to be uh, 70 years after the author dies. So that's why you can find uh, many old books, and, and now some very old movies are starting to be uh, public in the public domain, because it's been 70 years after the author uh, has died. Right? Until then, the author, his, his estate, his children, the company, whatever, they can continue to have exclusive uh, control over the copyright for that. Right? Um, unless you want to use it for, for different reasons. Sometimes there's reasons when it's okay to use a copyright material. So for example, if you're using it to make money, if it's for commercial use, if you're taking somebody else's thing, uh, art or music to make uh, money, that's bad. And then you're violating the copyright. If you use it for non-profit educational purposes, then that's better. Right? Many teachers in the university will show you, you, you clips from movies, they'll play music to you, you watch TV shows, you'll look at different art. And we can do that because we're using it for educational purposes. We're not violating copyright by showing you uh, five minutes of a movie in a, in a class. That's, we have the right to do that. Right? It also depends on the nature of the copyrighted work, how long it will last, and the amount used. So for example, if you're making a one minute YouTube video, or Billy Billy video or something, and you use five seconds, or you use 10 seconds of a song, that's a lot. 10 seconds out of 60 seconds is somebody else's song. That's a lot of time, because the video is so short. So in that case, you're probably violating the people's copyright by using their music for so long. Right? Um, that's why in, in apps like, like TikTok, for example, uh, TikTok, when you, you can put background music in your video, right? Because TikTok has an arrangement with the music company. They, have, they bought the rights to use certain kinds of music on TikTok. That's why they don't have every song on TikTok. Because it would be violating, violating the copyright. Right? Many people are on YouTube or Billy Billy or other, other companies, they'll upload a video and there's too much other people's music. There's too much other people's video. And then the video will get removed because you're violating uh, the other people's copyright. Um, copyright includes many things. It protects many, many different things. For example, images. Or um, photographs. Right? If somebody has taken the time to do a, a drawing of, of, a, of a character, uh, they own the right to that character. So for example, um, uh, so for example, let's say you do a drawing of Superman. And people say, wow, that's a really great drawing of Superman. And then you want to go sell that picture online. You, you go to a company and you want to put your picture of Superman on a t-shirt and sell it. You can't do that. The image of Superman belongs to somebody else. You do not have the right to use that image. If you do it, you're, you're violating the copyright, the, the DC 
uh, whoever owns the right to the image of Superman. Even though you're doing your own artistic version of it, it will probably be against the law if you try to make money from that. Right? Photographs is the same thing. Somebody took the hard time and effort to make a nice photograph. If you just put it on the cover of your magazine without paying the person, uh, then that's very unethical. Right? Videos, it's the same thing. Specific designs, right? It depends, the law varies from, from, from place to place, uh, but you have to learn the law very closely because maybe you thought your design is very unique or you took somebody else's design and you, and you changed it a little bit, but you, you didn't change it enough. You copied the design too much, then you're violating the copyright. Words. If somebody has written an article, they've written a book, whatever they've written, whatever they have, they have said out loud, if you copy and paste that, then you're violating their copyright. And it can be a variety of different things, computer programming code, templates and, and things like that on, on After Effects and different software. Um, and there are exceptions for it. Maybe if it's a public speech, if it's a press release, then that information isn't copyrighted. Right? There are many copyright-free services. Right? Um, in uh, MCOM and, and PRA, we have access to a, a stock footage service called Storyblocks. And they have hundreds of thousands of photos and pictures and videos and, 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 and templates and graphics. They have all of these different image, images, photos, videos, everything. They have all of this, but it's copyright-free. The students can use it in their videos, um, and it's fine, it's legal, right? If you work for a different media organization, maybe they have a subscription to this, or you have to buy the video, right? So when you're making, when you're making a, a news report or you're making a video or something like that, you want to have an image of somebody playing on their phone, you can film it yourself, or you can go to this service and get the video for, for free because it's included. You have paid for the subscription, right? Um, or there's Creative Commons. Right? There's a website, there's many different services where the, the images, the videos are copyright free. But there's music that is copyright free. Right? The people created the music or the video or the photo, and they just give it away for free. Right? Then you can use it. Um, another thing that you can do to avoid copyright uh, violation is to give attribution, to say where the video comes from, to say who the song comes from. And this might help. It might not help, but it might not. But mostly the, the way that you get around this is you pay to use people's content. If you find, if you work for a magazine and you see a website and there's a very cool design on the website, a cool photo or design or image or something like that, and you want to use it, you contact the owner. And you say, I would like to buy uh, the right to use your image. And then you negotiate a price and you pay them a thousand yuan or something, and then you have the right to use the image. Everything is solved. Okay. But there are many, many cases of people violating, violating copyright because they think they can get the information online for free. Right? Or they look at another magazine, they watch another video, and they see, oh, in this design, they're, they're, they're stealing images and photos from everybody else. Well, that doesn't matter, because other people are stealing copyrighted work. It doesn't mean you can do it. You have to check. Right? Because you are the one who's going to get in trouble if you, if you violate copyright. Your company will get in trouble for that. Right? If it's on social media, it doesn't mean it's copyright free. Just if somebody posts a video on, on social media or they post a picture or an image, it doesn't mean you can just copy, paste it, and use it. Right? That person created it, they have a right to use it. That means you can't just credit something and assume it's fine. Some of the time that's enough to demonstrate you haven't plagiarized, but it, you have, it's not a catch-all. It's better just to talk to the person, work out an arrangement, pay them a bit of money, and then, and then it's fine. Then you're not violating their copyright. Then you're not violating uh, their intellectual property. Uh, but on the other hand, you cannot copyright an idea. 
If it's not codified in some way, then it's fair game. So you have an idea for, uh, for a movie, and you say, I have an idea for a movie. There's a spaceship, a spaceship full of people, and they're traveling around to different planets, and they're exploring a different life around the galaxy. It sounds like Star Trek, or it sounds like many other kinds of, of movies and TV shows that have been made in the past. But it's okay, it's just an idea. You can't copyright the idea that people are gonna go in a spaceship and fly around the universe. If it's very, very specific, if you start to copy the characters, and you say, oh, the captain, he's a British guy, but he's French and he's bald, and then there's this woman, and you, and you start to copy individual characters from other media, then you could get in trouble. But the general idea of something you can't copyright that. Um, <laughs> there's also the use of, of GIFs or GIFs, I don't know what you call it, right? The, the little images that loop, that people use quite a lot in social media. There's a bit of controversy over that uh, because you're using an image from a movie or you're using an image from a TV show and then you added some text to it or something like that. Um, this is a bit controversial, but many, many social media companies, they've worked out some arrangement with the owner of the image and paid them a little bit of money to, to use their image in the, in, the, in the GIF, right? And pictures is very, very troublesome, right? It's very difficult for photographers to make a full-time living just doing photographs, but it's also very, very important. When you have a movie premiere or some event is happening, there's, you know, things going on in society and somebody's taking their time, uh, to go out and, and take photos of what's going on. And then they, maybe they sell them to try to make some money. Right? It's somebody's livelihood, they're doing this to make money. You don't want to steal the photograph from them. 